Great. So you can hear me okay? Uh Uh-huh. Wonderful. So let's start with the North American blockchain, uh, someone that you've obviously just hosted. Uh, Do you want to share any sort of big takeaways and industry insights that you sort of walked away from, walked away with, sorry? It was great to see a lot of builders and entrepreneurs, a lot of capital there at the summit. And what we took away and what we hope for every summit is that um, professionals from outside the digital asset industry get exposed and get connected with um, those that are, are on the inside of the industry, right? So we build our partnerships with uh, established traditional financial institutions, traditional companies that have made up the Fortune 500 list for many decades, and, and they begin to understand that uh, blockchain will do for the transfer of value what the internet did for the transfer of information over the last couple of decades. Mm, wonderful. And do you think uh, crypto is entering the public consciousness with you know the the you know the first crypto question in the GOP uh, uh, debate? Do you think it's just starting to ramp up this year versus oh, sorry next year versus twenty twenty or twenty sixteen? Absolutely. I think with institutions like BlackRock and Fidelity. Uh, battle testing the uh, digital asset ecosystem and finding it at an appropriate maturity level to come out with uh, institutional products for accredited investors and traditional investors, it's certainly going to be entering the public consciousness. Uh, There's a lot of reputational repair that has gone on over the last uh, year since the FTX uh, tragedy and debacle. And so we expect 2024 to be a year of increased reputational uh, strength and increased consumer adoption, both at the institutional level and the consumer level. Mm. And what are you seeing and hearing from folks in this space um, regarding the, the, the year ahead? Well, it's, it's pretty clear to everybody in the space that we will have a Bitcoin spot ETF approved sometime between now and uh, late January. And we don't really know what this will will kick off. If it will kick off the next bull market a little bit early because the halving isn't until April. Um, But one way or the other, we have two pretty big events with the ETF and the halving that could generate um, an increasingly um, curious audience that has has been on the sidelines cause them to want to to get more educated on the digital asset ecosystem and learn more about decentralization and about the opportunities uh, for solving real world business problems that come along with blockchains and, um, you know, both in the finance world with Bitcoin and and crypto assets in general, and also in the broader enterprise world with uh, blockchain applications that may not be as revolutionary as, as Bitcoin or Ethereum or some of the other digital assets, but they are nonetheless uh, transformative on the back end for some processes related to um, transparency, custody, provenance, and all manner of things that uh, y- you need uh, distributed ledgers for. Hmm. Wonderful. So you're optimistic about the year ahead? We're certainly optimistic. 2024 is going to be uh, a very exciting year. Uh, we have a an election. We have uh, the ETF approval that will likely happen and, and the halving. So uh, there won't be a dull moment, that's for sure. Buckle up. <laughs> will we see regulatory clarity in the year ahead, do you believe? I think there's sufficient regulatory clarity for a, a bull market to occur. Now, is it sufficient for the U.S. to remain uh, a global leader in digital assets? No. Uh, mm-hmm. So we do need to see increased regulatory clarity from the federal government. We have a lot of states like Texas and Wyoming that are providing uh, ecosystems and jurisdictions for innovation. But there are some things that the federal level, um, you know, things that are exclusive to the federal level, especially around securities law and so and stable coins and banking regulations. So we really need to see the stable coin legislation and uh, the FIT Act uh, make their way through the the Senate in the coming uh, months for there to really be an explosion of opportunity and growth. 
Mm, absolutely. And have you seen an aversion to a market before before this from a policy standpoint and a, a political standpoint? Have, is this new? Have we seen this before? Did you say aversion to market reform? Uh, no, sorry, an aversion to just the industry in general. Have we seen this before with you know previous industries? You know, uh, Amanda, I actually wrote a, an article about this recently around the increased scrutiny and controversial nature of digital assets relative to the internet. And mm. um, the internet was mildly controversial for a couple of different reasons, but I think the pretty the public pretty quickly saw the applications and the opportunities, and the incumbents were quick to to grab on, and those that weren't. Uh, suffer the, the economic consequences and, and may no longer be in business. Mm. It's a little bit different with the digital asset industry. We are um, embarking on something that is more controversial because the incumbents um, are, are more centralized in finance. The regulatory environment is more intense than the communications regulatory environment because we are dealing with money and value. And, and so that is why, in my opinion, this is a more controversial uh, and challenging uh, regulatory battle than we've seen with other technological innovations. Mm, very interesting. Wonderful. Do you have any other comments about um, just thoughts on the year ahead? I don't think so. I think that pretty well sums them up. Okay. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to hit uh, stop recording right now.